There are many ways of acquiring weapons, armor, and groceries when playing Kingdom Come Deliverance. It can be looted, bought, or stolen from numerous enemies and vendors. But another way is items can be given to you as quest rewards. Normally this isn't ideal as usually the groceries gained is minimal and the gear is substandard. But I ask the question, can you beat Kingdom Come Deliverance using only quest rewards? Since I'm a bit of a masochist, I also decided to take this a step further and make this the ultimate honorable night playthrough. These are the ground rules I set for myself. I'm not allowed to loot, steal, lockpick, or pickpocket anything from dead bodies, traitors, civilians, or chests. The only thing I'm allowed to use are items given to Henry or bought with Grosh and specifically acquired as quest rewards. To make things even harder, all weapons, armor, and potions I do use must be bought or repaired at the merchants. They cannot be done so by Henry, so that means no herbalism, alchemy, or maintenance allowed. Anything bought or repaired must be done so at full price. No haggling to get a better deal. I am not allowed to use stealth or poison against enemies or avoid combat. All encounters must be taken head on. And lastly, anything deemed morally wrong or dishonorable is forbidden, but this line gets a little blurry, so more on that later. I plan on doing a lot more challenge runs in the future, so if you want to see those, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I post. If there's a specific run you want to see me do, leave a suggestion in the comments down below. With all that done, let's begin this run. I started a new game and since this is a challenge run, I picked hardcore mode and selected all 9 negative perks. After waking up and talking to mother, I picked both strength options since I want to do as much damage as possible in combat and go speak to father who gives me a list of items to collect to finish a sword. I get the cross guard and going down to Kunish's, I immediately encounter a roadblock. The way to traditionally get his things is either to beat him in hand to hand combat, steal his things, or have your friends gang up on him and beat him up for you. Since none of these options seem very honorable, I came up with a different solution. I looked at his chest of items and went to speak to my friends at the tavern. After refusing to go with him to throw shit at the German's house, I spoke to Fritz who gave me lockpicks as a quest reward, and since I wouldn't be using lockpicking in this run, I could sell the lockpicks to get the charcoal. From there, I got the charcoal, collected the ale, and went to my combat lesson. After that was done, I went back to father, got nails for Teresa, bonded with him staring at Teresa's ass, Fine loss, eh? And then showed him why he probably should have had an abortion. <laughs> Scalus gets raided, I watch my mother and father die, and quickly escape down the moat. Now, at this point traditionally, you're supposed to run away, steal a horse, and ride down to Townburg to warn them about the incoming danger. But since I made myself the rule of not avoiding combat, instead, I bravely turn around to face the human chasing me to claim my first victim. Yep. Except, yeah, about that. You're not actually supposed to be able to beat him, as the game is all too happy to tell you. There is a way to do it if you level some combat skills in Scalots, but since I didn't, I didn't have the strength or the ability to block in this fight, and it was just too much. I tried probably about a dozen different times, barely landed a single hit on him, so I decided since most of this was scripted, the challenge will begin after the tutorial's over. This is just not happening. So I ran down the hill and there was no way I was going to be able to fight off three humans attacking Teresa, so instead I whistled to distract them, but I did do something I hadn't done before. Instead of stealing the horse like the game tells you to do, I just ran away on foot. Turns out, before reaching the end of this fence, the game automatically gives you a horse, which means my record stays clean. The baker's mare. I never stole the horse. Cutscene Henry did. As I'm riding away, I take an arrow to the knee, race to Townburg, have the arrow removed. From there, I discover that Robart is a bit of a dick. Good as new. Ah. <sighs> Stephanie is a bit of a whore. I enjoyed our little talk, Henry. And Radzig is a bit of an ass. Are you donkey? Before planning my escape. Again, the game prompts you here to steal a suit of armor and escape disguised as a guard, but since all these suits were in locked chests and I wasn't allowed to lockpick, that wasn't going to be an option. Instead, I jumped down the moat, ran down the path by the quarry to avoid the guards, and made my way back to Scalots. Along the way, I took out both looters on the road, stopped to see my ex-girlfriend, and decided to bury my ex-parents. While looking for a shovel to bury them, I find Spishek, and once again I'm faced with a moral dilemma. See, I hate this guy, but my favorite dialogue option to take with him is unavailable to me on this run. I really want to do it, but I can't. So I just scare him off, get the spade, dig the grave, and get my cheeks clapped by Runt. 
With that, the tutorial is over and the run can officially begin. After waking up and talking to the miller, he wants him to steal a ring to repay his debt. I tell him no and go up to the castle. Sir Hanish tells me what he thinks of my social life. Fucking shit. And Henry somehow gets made a soldier after proving he can't fight and disobeys direct orders. On the way to my combat lesson, I discover an interesting way the peasants like to huddle for warmth. It's a turducken. Complete the training, challenge Hans Capon to archery and sword fighting, winning both and getting his hunting bow as a reward. I speak to the bailiff who gives me some groschen and go to the guard tower to pick up my first pieces of armor. They are complete shit, but it's better than nothing, I suppose. I use the gold to buy some arrows from the tournament master, learn the master strike and train with Bernard to gain a few levels. I pick up first aid 2 and burger from the main level tree, then to help with combat I pick up tight grip, mule 2 and headcracker from the strength tree and blood letter and sadish from the warfare tree. I then topped up my nourishment at the tavern, buying the cheapest thing they had, cooked horse meat. Just know this was pretty much exclusively what I ate for the entirety of this run, since all food had to be bought. I then went on patrol with Nightingale, was given a torch, rang the bell and beat the shit out of Hans Capon. Again. Hanish yells at us and tells us we're both dog shit. Crucifix! <sighs> what in the name of Christ is happening here? I get assigned to go hunting with Hans Capon, we compete to see who can kill the most hares, and I get rewarded with some Groshin for winning. I then put the hare meat in the trunk, as I only needed to use it to win the contest, and we go off to find a boar. Hans Capon shows off his hunting prowess, <laughs> then proceeds to get lost and captured, so I have to go and rescue him. I find him at a camp with two humans, and I have to fight them both with only a club. This actually goes pretty well. Uh, the second time anyways. I get Hans Capon back to Ratai, get a horse, and go investigate the murders in Neuhof. After talking to the survivors, I follow the trail to the bandits and find one that's still alive. This was actually a pretty close battle, but I barely pull it off. That was close. Take the hoof pick, get told it's Ginger's, and then get tasked with finding him after he ran away. Before going after him, I went back to Ratai, got a room to recover my health, bought the only longsword I could afford at the time, and one bandage, spoke to the charcoal burners who told me to kill more bandits, and went off to find them. I managed to kill one of them the first time, but the other one got me. Damn it! On my second attempt, I was able to kill them both. That's right, you bastards. Spoke to Ginger, who told me about a limping bandit in an Ujits, and I got my reward from Radzig, more gold, before going back to Ratai. And I kind of messed up here. I was so eager to pay back my debt to the miller and the apothecary now that I had the money, I didn't leave myself enough gold to get all my gear repaired. So I repaired what I could and went off to find the limping bandit. I arrived in Ujits only to find a crowd gathered around his house to see he's already been executed. As I'm examining the scene for clues, I discover that people in medieval times apparently aren't even slightly affected by dead bodies. Are they just moving in? Hey, there's, there's still a dead body out here. I then speak to the priest, but knowing what that leads to, I actually refuse to drink with him. Instead, I take the alternate route of speaking to the bailiff, who points me to the scribe in Ratai to discover the connection to Lubosh's gang there. The scribe wants a potion of embrocation from the apothecary before he'll help me, so I go to purchase it and... Shit, I still don't have any f***ing money. Knowing the huntsman has a quest for me, I decide to go do that. He tells me he needs some help catching birds and tried to serenade me with his maiden call. What? I resisted the temptation, collected the birds, and returned for my reward. He tried to seduce me again, <laughs> but Henry tucked his erection up into his waistband, got some arrows and gold for his trouble, and went to go get the potion. The scribe told us to go to look for a Riki in Ladechko. I spoke to Riki's father, and because I know this quest well, I tried to do something I thought was clever. You see, the bandits that attack Riki have a camp that's not far from Ladechko, and because I was trying to arrest Riki and didn't want him to die, I thought I could go deal with them first. Now normally I would go through at night, kill them all with stealth, but for this playthrough I thought the way to do this honorably was in self defense if I was attacked first. And you know what? These douchebags are the only bandits that don't attack you. I tried pulling out my weapon, sitting on their log, messing with their cooking pot, jumping on top of a sleeping one, but other than assaulting them which I felt would be breaking my rules, I couldn't get them to attack me. So after this crushing defeat, I went to Riki's cave knowing full well he's about to die in this next encounter. After getting the information about Timmy from him, the bandits were waiting outside so we set a trap. There was three of them and two of us so I knew the odds were stacked against us and to my surprise, for the first time ever, Riki was actually worth a shit. He even killed one of the bandits by himself while I distracted the other two. Holy shit! 
and we were then able to separate them and kill them. But since he was part of the massacre, I couldn't really let him go, so I took him to the Rathai jail, past this field of magic cows, and decided to train some bow skill before continuing with the main quest. Now, my favorite way of training bow is shooting logs with Vatsek, and you can win prize money each time you win the contest. Now, because of this, I didn't want to cheese the entire concept of this run by just making infinite money here until I could afford anything I wanted, so I made the exception that all prize money here would be solely used for buying savior schnapps. As I'm on console, I don't have the unlimited saves mod, and all I could do was possibly save me hours of backtracing just in case my game crashed or I died. After making about 400 Groshum with the contest and getting my bow skill up to 5, I was prompted that a tournament was going to be starting soon, so I decided to do that. I placed my bet with Peshek on myself to win, and entered the tourney. Since I'm given gear and weapons to compete in the tourney, this was actually a cakewalk, and after winning the whole thing, I collected my prize from Hanush and got my winnings from Peshek. Since you also get pieces of armor, in this case the Lords of Lipa pieces, for the wins, I wasn't going to use them because I can get a whole suit of armor just by cheesing this, so I kept all the pieces on my horse after winning them. I was going to be using some of that prize money though, so I bought myself 420 Groshen worth of Saber Schnapps, and finally I was able to afford some chain mail and a good gambeson, so I spent all my money to buy that not even realizing the world of shit I just put myself in. Because next, I had Black Peter to deal with, and let me tell you, this was rough. Firstly, even though I had chain mail, I still didn't have gloves, plate armor, or a good sword. And second, Black Peter is the only enemy in this entire game that uses poison on his weapon. That means every time he hits you, there's a high chance that you get poisoned and slowly die. I tried again, and again, and again, but I just couldn't beat him. He always managed to get at least one hit off on me, and I died. You son of a bitch! Now, after about 15 attempts, there was one time I actually did beat him, but since I was already poisoned, all I could do was take out my anger on his corpse before joining his fate. This is when I realized how badly I'd messed up. Now that I saw it was doable, I figured I would just go back to the apothecary, buy the antidote, so if I did kill him again, I could stop the spread of the poison. But because I spent so much money on the gambeson and the chainmail, I didn't have enough money to afford the antidote. Yep, I was a moron. Since I didn't want to reload a prior save because I felt that would be cheating, and since I knew the encounter was there, I couldn't go off and complete another quest since that would be considered avoiding combat, there wasn't anything I could do except to have a perfect fight with him. But I would try something new though. Although I'm not allowed to use stealth, I am allowed to use my bow, and I figured since he's the one that attacks me, it would be considered in self-defense. So I figured if I could land a shot off on him before he got to me, it might weaken him enough to get the fight over with before he can hit me. <laughs> Now, I'll admit it took several tries to actually get this right, but armed with this new strategy, I was finally ready to put this ass wipe out of my misery. This is the worst! But then, after about two hours of trying on this fight, I finally got this.
Fuck you, Black Peter. That fight with Black Peter made me realize I would need some better equipment, weapons, and combat skill before moving forward into some larger battles, so I started doing some of the side quests around Ratai. My first stop ended up being with Captain Bernard to hunt some bandits. The side quest required clearing out bandit bases around the map and taking the bandit leader Spurs back to Bernard to prove that they're dead. Remember how I said at the start of the video the morality lines got a little blurry? This is the part I was talking about. This quest required me to loot the bandit leader's inventory to get the spurs. While this was kind of bending one of my rules, I rationalized this with the fact that an honorable knight would hunt down bandits to make the road safer for passing wayfarers, and since this was the only way to complete the quest, I would only take the things marked as quest items, being the spurs and the bandits ears. The first camp was pretty easy to clear, but after killing the leader and taking his ear and spurs, most of his other bandits ran away. Since they surrendered, I'd have to let them go. After making an absolutely pathetic 90 groschen from the entire first camp, I'd have to try and leave the leader for last if I wanted to make some money doing this quest. The leader of the second camp showed me his sword spinning skills, and shortly after shitting myself, he killed me. On my second attempt, I killed him, but most of his gang also surrendered. This really wasn't going all that well. Then, while clearing out the third camp, I almost died in the stupidest way possible. After I killed the leader and took his spurs, I let this archer go, but I made him leave his weapon and proceeded to clear out the rest of the camp. On my way back to Ratai, I saw someone running on the road, and when I went to investigate, it was the same bandit I'd released earlier. Apparently, that day he woke up and chose violence and tried to fight me with just his fists. And he absolutely fucked up my world. Not only did he block most of my strikes, I was rarely able to block anything of his. I also discovered the combat system can be very janky when fighting enemies with a sword while they're unarmed. Most of the combos I performed wouldn't register as being landed, so as I was stuck in the animation, he would always get a couple of free hits on me. This asshole beat my ass all the way down to 12 health, then surrendered again, so I wasn't even allowed to kill him. But, in the words of Batman, I won't kill you, but I don't have to save you. So I followed this piece of shit into the woods and watched him bleed to death like the backstabbing son of a bitch he was. But after being in three separate battles clearing all three camps, my armor was absolutely destroyed so before hunting down any more, I would take some non-combat quests around town. I spoke to the bailiff about getting some awesome jobs for my friends from Scalitz, but the other two will have to carry shit. Then spoke to Alex about who'd be interested in taking those jobs. He told me to come back the next day, so in the meantime, I took out Teresa. But you certainly know how to make a girl feel special. Helped the executioner find love. You've made me the happiest man in the world. And took a totally non-gay bath with Hans cape on. After giving the commoners jobs, carrying shit. I knew that Sir Hanish would have a quest for me to get a really good weapon, so I went to go speak with him. He tasked me with getting rid of the vicar and Ujits who was looking for heretics. I spoke to the vicar, found a cross that belonged to the Bowers, confirmed that they were heretics, and had a choice to make. I could either talk to Father Godwin and try to help the Bowers, or I could go straight back to the vicar and report them. Normally, I would try to convince the Bowers to run away, but for this playthrough, I decided the right course of action would actually be honest with the vicar. To my surprise, he rewarded me with 250 groschen for my help, and since the vicar would be leaving, Sir Hanush also rewarded me with St. Michael's sword, which ended up being the sword I would use for the remainder of this run. The stats on it aren't near as good as St. George's sword, but for a quest reward, this was a huge step up from what I had before. With everything done around Ratai for the time being, I decided to go to Neuhof and take Zora's quest to have a horse race in Talmberg. Sir Divish said the horse race wouldn't take place until the next day, so in the meantime, I did Lady Stephanie's quest to retrieve items for her friend's wedding. Nothing too exciting happened here, but I did get a chance to stop off at Samopesh and was satisfied faction got to tell the blacksmith that that fucking asshole Black Peter was dead. I sent him straight to hell where he belongs. That felt pretty good. After delivering all the items to Lady Stephanie, Henry showed he ain't no simp. Undressing in front of Sir Divish's lady wife is quite inappropriate. And after winning the horse race, went back to Neuhof for my reward. Zora gave me the noble saddle, which is the best saddle in the game, but I wouldn't be needing it since I wasn't looting on this run, so I didn't need the extra carry capacity, but I could sell it to make more money. As I got back to Ratai, I saw Hans Capon had a quest for me to win the tourney in his name. Luckily, it was going to be happening the next day, so I placed my bet with Peshek, won the tourney again, collected my prize from Hans Capon, Golden Spurs, and then went to the Armorsmith. All my questing had rewarded me with over 3,000 groschen, so I got my current gear repaired and bought myself some chasses, a male coif, sacks and gauntlets, and a shitty kuras. 
After finally having a halfway decent loadout for the first time since this run started, I went to the mill to ask about Timmy, <laughs> found him at a local farm, Shit. got directions to the bandit base from him, and spoke to Sir Radzik. He wanted me to go recon the base and carry out some sabotage, but since poisoning and sabotage was against my moral code, all I could do was scout the area. I'd have to be careful though, since I wasn't allowed to avoid combat, if any of the cumans and bandits saw me, I'd have to stay and fight and could quickly get overwhelmed. So I used the back entrance, and as soon as the quest prompted me to go back, I quickly turned and left. After getting back to report what I'd seen to Sir Radzig, I decided to punch myself in the dick. Trying to make this run as hard as possible, I decided the most noble thing to do would be to send as few people into battle as possible, because it would mean risking the lives of fewer soldiers. But with the combination of no sabotage or poisoning mixed with the fact that we had minimal troops made this battle damn near impossible. The problem started almost immediately where walking across the bridge four men died for absolutely no reason before encountering the first wave of enemies. After taking them out we fight further into the town and take on a second wave of troops. After that we move to the center of the camp, taking out the human leader before moving on to the upper part where the church is. On my first attempt I actually made it pretty far, taking very little damage, playing smart and picking my targets wisely. It wasn't until I got to the churchyard that I realized how screwed I was. Since I was being cautious I hadn't been aggressive enough and the numbers game caught up with me so I failed due to too many men dying. So on my second attempt I was much more aggressive running ahead of all the troops thinking they would come to my aid. Except the men never came. That's what she said. <laughs> so over the course of my next 12 attempts were various ways of trying different approaches on how I could complete this battle. I tried just using my bow, letting the men rush in and flanking around the back, rushing ahead of everyone and trying to get as much damage off before they got there, but nothing was working. I was getting more and more frustrated each time I failed and kept playing worse and worse. <sighs> Come on man. It got to a point where I was consistently dying in the middle camp not even making it halfway through the battle. With my frustration at a boiling point I had finally reached the part of the game I just couldn't do. So I gave up. The run was over and I had failed. But then I had a couple days to calm down and I decided I would try again but I would give myself 5 attempts to get through this battle as it was. If I couldn't do it I would reload a prior save, ask for more troops and continue the battle that way. This was it. Can I save the integrity of this run? On my first attempt I actually made good progress but still wasn't aggressive enough running out of troops just as I was about to try and take out the archers at the upper camp. On my second attempt I was so close, I had a few troops left, only a couple bandits and the archers to deal with but just as I turned around to get some distance to take out the archers, those dirty bastards shot me twice and I died. Come on, damn it. Then finally, on my third attempt, I was able to get this run.
Finally, I had completed this battle. Now came the runt fight. Now I'll be honest, if I died during this fight after all I'd done to get here, I would have snapped the game in half and probably would have never talked about it again. There was just no way I was going to be able to string another run like that together again, so it all came down to this. But I'm happy to say I killed him on my first try. Yes, finally. And the run continues. This definitely wasn't quite as many attempts as the Black Peter fight, but given that each attempt was roughly 20 minutes, this still took me almost 4 hours to complete. I never want to forget this. I'm glad you don't, Henry, because I sure as shit do at this point. After the battle was over, I was committed to not being underprepared for the next large encounter, so the real grind began. I decided to knock out all the rest of the side quests I could to give myself the largest possible sum of groschen so I could buy better gear, keep it in top notch condition, and hopefully gain some more combat skill, so I went off to do the Band of Bastards DLC. This is a multi-part quest that revolves around Sir Kuno, a once nobleman turned convict saved from the hangman by Radzik and indebted to him in times of need. This is honestly one of my favorite storylines to unfold and go through with Henry as he learns more about Kuno and his misfit gang, each bringing their own unique set of skills and personalities to the group. Sir Kuno is tasked with investigating the people responsible for strange attacks on farms in the area and Radzik wanted Henry to tag along to keep Kuno on a straight path. Before allowing me to join his gang, Kuno demanded I prove myself in combat by defeating one of his men. After I did, we rode out on the first mission, came across a burnout farm, and found a note from the House of Zul declaring their intentions of killing Sir Radzik. After bringing the note to Kuno, the band hunted down the men responsible for the raid on the farm. While the quest isn't hard, since both sides have an equal number of men, the most important thing is protecting Sir Kuno. While other members of the group can die in battle, they're brought back the next time you go to camp, whereas if Kuno goes down at any point in any of the encounters, the entire quest line fails. By sticking close to Kuno, taking advantage of quickly dispatching lightly armored opponents, I easily finish the first patrol. In the second patrol, the band is approached by a woman claiming her house is currently being pillaged by the Zul clan and Kuno wants to wait out the madness and strike when the enemy least expects it. However, knowing this means sacrificing everyone at the farm, I insist that an immediate assault is required to stop the killing and after passing a speed check, Kuno obliges. After the raid is stopped, Kuno's men cut loose, and I get the chance for some opportunities for interactions with his crew. I win 200 Groshen from Yom by beating him in a fist fight, win a combat jupon from Stephen Fletchling by beating him at dice, and once again convince Kuno that he shouldn't stoop to the level of our opposition. After getting back to the camp, we start the third patrol, which takes us towards Sasau, and as the company is fording the river, we're ambushed by archers. Where are you? Knowing the enemy has the advantage in range and high ground, the company retreats into the woods and I follow the men to ensure that Kuno survives. However, as per the rules of my challenge run, I cannot avoid combat, so once the men are safe, I had to go back to the river and wipe out the entire ambushing party single-handedly. This was a little tough, but my bow skill was high enough to get some decent shots off on a few of the bandits and the rest I was able to take advantage of the environment and isolate and kill them one by one. Kuno was under the suspicion that Jakey, the youngest and most abused member of the group, was responsible for arranging the ambush, so I was tasked with finding him and dealing with him whichever way I chose. I found Jakey tied to a tree in the woods, tricked and robbed by a woman, and then left to rot. I convinced Jakey to tell me where Hagenzul is, and figured the most honorable choice here would be to arrest him. This was tricky, because upon hearing this, Jakey immediately draws a sword and attacks me. If I wanted to place him under arrest, I'd have to beat him in combat without a weapon by knocking him out. This took quite a while, and he beat the ever-living shit out of my armor. But eventually, I was able to beat him into submission and took him to the Ratai Jail. Come on then, let's go. With Hoggins' location revealed, the band and I rode out to meet him in the final confrontation. As we approached, Hagen tried to buy out Kuno, and just as Kuno was about to accept, I reminded him one last time of his duty to stay loyal to Sir Radzig. Luckily, my speech skill was high enough to pass the speed check, and the two groups met in battle. Zul's men went down without much of a fight, and the final confrontation ended up looking more like Zul's audition for the casting couch, getting pounded from all sides by six men. I was trying to keep all of Kuno's men alive, but unfortunately, Jan Behrman was killed in the encounter, but this would make no difference on my reward, so as I reported my success to Sir Radzik, I received 800 Groshen. After I'd finished this DLC, I learned how to read from the Ujit scribe, took Teresa out on a second date, 
cleared out all of Bernard's cumin camps. What the hell? And talked to Hans Capon about another mission from Sir Hanush. After getting yelled at as usual, What the hell do the pair of you think you're doing? He told us Bernard's cousin, Wolfen of Camberg, had been raiding estates that belonged to Sir Hanush and he wanted him dealt with without bloodshed if possible. After getting to the camp, I spoke to Captain Bernard and offered to go negotiate with Wolfen. Once I got into Wolfen's camp though, I challenged Wolfen to a duel and had an epic battle with him. And then had to dispose of the rest of his camp. There was probably about 15 bandits here and it was a bit of a struggle. I had a lot of close calls here, at one point only having about 15 health. But by being patient, using some marigold decoction between waves of enemies, I slayed Wolfen's entire camp and went back to report my success to Bernard. Initially he was mad that I disobeyed orders again but told me to go report to Sir Hanush. Hanush rewarded me with the Magdeburg Kuras and I felt ready to continue with the main questline. Going into Merhoyed, I learned that they had been attacked and the whole village had come down with a sickness. They had a prisoner, but if I wanted to speak to him, I'd have to find a cure for the plague. I spoke to all afflicted in the village, went to the monastery in Sasau, and discovered that they had been poisoned. After administering a cure, the captain told me of a meeting point where fake Groshen from the enemy was being crafted and exchanged. Upon getting there, I found the caravan had been ambushed, but one of the mercenaries was still alive. While questioning the survivor, the knight that attacked the caravan had returned to finish the job. After a brief chase, I beat him in combat, learned his name was Ulrich, and we decided to work together to discover the source of the fake Roshan. This friendship went to shit about five minutes later. As I was on the way back to Rathai to speak to Tobias Pfeiffer, I came across a bandit ambush and decided to clear them out. Then, this dipshit comes riding through, thinks I'm shooting at him, and decides to attack me. What the hell are you doing? What the fuck? Get out of here, stop it. Since I didn't want to kill him, I had to avoid him as I was slowly being surrounded by all the bandits. Stop it. Go away. I wasn't shooting at you. Not gonna lie, this kind of set a tone for a decision I made later, but in the meantime, I had some leads to follow. I spoke to Tobias Pfeiffer. But then we don't even know if Ulrich is his real name. Yeah, he's a grumpy bastard too. Did some digging around Sasau, and found the man to talk to was Zack, a local blacksmith that worked with copper. He told me how another blacksmith in town, Master Oda, had insulted his son's craftsmanship skills, so if he was gonna help me, I'd have to help him get revenge. I challenged Oda to a duel with bludgeons to prove Zack's armor was superior, and won. Zack then pointed me towards Rapota, who was waiting in the center of town, and as I approached him, he attempts to run away. When I caught him, he dropped to one knee, slid off the screen, and prayed to a horse's ass for forgiveness. What the hell? What do you want from me? <laughs> he told me where the fake Groshen was made, I asked Ulrich for help, and we stormed up the hill to the bandits outside the caves. As we got to the bandits, I retreated just a little ways to, uh, get a better vantage, and let Ulrich go ahead by himself. I'm sad to say, my tactics cost Ulrich his life. Good riddance, you grumpy old bastard. I went into the caves alone and placed the man in charge, Sir Yeshek, under arrest. After getting back to Ratai, I had to go interrogate him, and as I got to the dungeons, I see Yeshek doing something strange for some change. Why are they in here together? And after explaining his situation... The way it began was, I was short of coin. I wasn't going to turn down the chance of work. In this business, you don't ask too many questions. If you say so. He told me how to find the Crimps recruiting in Sasau. I met with them at night in the church, and they told me in order to gain their trust, I would have to infiltrate the monastery and kill a man named Pius. And I ran into a stalemate. The way to complete this quest is to find Carl, a man about to be sworn into the monastery, and take his place. He wanted to speak to me alone, so I got his guardian drunk by beating him at dice, and he told me to steal the writ and the pouch of coins before he would let me enter in his place. But I didn't have a way to do this honorably. Up to this point, the game had always given me an option around stealing. I either had a workaround where I could buy the items, win them as prizes, or have others acquire them for me. But not this time. I tried waiting until night to see if he left it in a chest, talked to him to see if there was any options of winning it off him, looked up guides online to see what my options were on getting into the monastery, and I found nothing. The only way to get in and do the quest properly was to steal the items. So while he was asleep, I pickpocketed the items from him, gave the purse to Carl, and took the writ to the monastery to be entered into the service. After getting into the monastery, Henry sang with the voice of a thousand angels, spoke to the other novices, and eventually learned that Pius was novice Antonius. 
When confronted, rather than killing him, he suggests we escape the monastery together and then go our separate ways. I gathered the materials we would need to make it look as though an accident had happened, executed the plan, and when safely outside the monastery walls, I informed him I'd be placing him under arrest. Since he was also part of the murder of Neuhoff towards the beginning of the game, I felt this was the honorable thing to do even though I'd lied to him. He refused to go, but after I beat him in hand-to-hand -hand combat, I took him to the Ratai jail, received some Groschen, and went to meet with the Crips. Unfortunately, since I hadn't killed Pius and taken his die like they had asked me to do, they didn't believe that I'd killed him so they attacked me. I got the die from their bodies, discovered they were based out of an old abandoned town of Rannick, and was asked by Radzig to once again infiltrate and scout the area before they launched an attack. Unfortunately, this time, it doesn't go quite as smoothly. After entering the camp and making a brief pass through, I learned the one responsible for all the chaos is actually a character we met briefly at the very start of the game, it's Van Toth. He shows you he has your father's sword, tells you who your real father is, Radzik Kobela, and then has someone beat the shit out of you. In the middle of the night, I get a surprise visit from Spishek, you bastard, who offers to help break you out in return for his freedom. Not having any other choice, I accept and sprint through the camp for freedom, jumping onto a trash pile along the wall and running away into the darkness. Upon escaping, I brief Radzig on what I saw, grant Spishek his freedom, and make my way to Vranik for what looks like the final assault. The battle is actually quite easy, I don't think it's scripted like the Privis Levitz where you have to keep a certain amount of troops. As long as I don't die, the battle is won. I found a letter that talked about plans of overthrowing a castle, and we realized Toth must be talking about Talmberg. However, while the Vranic ambush was taking place, Toth had already ridden to Talmberg, kidnapped Lady Stephanie, and taken over the castle with a handful of his best soldiers. So Radzig rides in and gets captured, I have a brief battle in the courtyard of Talmberg, and Toth raises the portcullis, preventing access to the inner courtyard. In an attempt to rescue the victims, a plan is made for a night raid, but since I'm not allowed to use stealth, I just run up to the nearest bandit, fail the quest on purpose, and get tasked to help the engineer build a trebuchet for a siege. Fafar says he would require help from Master Conrad, an engineer that specialized in building weapons of war, so I went to sass out to convince him to help. However, before he agreed to go, he would need to be granted permission by the Master Builder. There are a few ways to do this, but the most honorable is by beating him in a fair game of dice, then giving him his money back, but insisting Conrad be allowed to leave. You fucker! He agreed, and after taking Conrad back to Talmberg, a couple of days have to pass while the trebuchet is built. To pass the time, I cleared a couple more bandit camps assigned by the custodian in Sasau, and went back to watch the trebuchet have its first test. <laughs> Perfect. We are then informed that Toth has reinforcements about the ambush, so we set up for a counterattack. Henry is given the role of a captain, leading a small regiment of troops in an assault on the front lines. This part of the battle is quite easy, the only part that can be failed is if the soldiers guarding the trebuchet get overwhelmed, so I got to the hill fairly quickly and the battle was a breeze. In the encounter, we captured Toth's right hand man Eric, tried to negotiate but fail, and started the siege on Talmberg. He is really not in a rush to do this, huh? There's another couple of in-game days that need to pass, so I found and cleared all the rest of the bandit camps around Sasau assigned by the custodian, getting almost 2,000 groschen as a reward, so I celebrate by making boom boom time with Teresa. Giggity giggity, giggity goo, stick around. With all the side quests done, I headed back to the upper camp and began the final assault. All my grinding with quests and battles had paid off, as most of my gear was close to the best in the game, and my combat skills were close to max. I cleared out all the waves of enemies, agreed to an exchange with Toth for Radzig and Lady Stephanie, but ultimately Toth got away. Henry got some clarity from Sir Radzig about his secrecy. We were young. It happened. And I couldn't marry a commoner. And had a heartwarming exchange with his adopted father Martin. I'm proud of you. After making it back to the castle, Henry and Hans were assigned to go deliver a letter to Burgau at his castle and ride off into the sunset proving that yes, you can beat Kingdom Come Deliverance using only quest items. However, sadly, as far as beating the entire game honorably, unfortunately, no. You can't. My reputation was almost hundreds across the board, except those ungrateful sons of bitches in Ladechko for some reason. I had no stealth kills or knockouts, no haggling, but unfortunately, the items I had to pickpocket off the Guardian gave me two stolen items valued at 51 Groschen. 
This run was a lot of fun to do, and it was very challenging for the early and mid game, but once decent gear was equipped, it became no more challenging than a normal playthrough. The hardest parts were beating Black Peter and the Battle of Privislavets only because I had done no sabotage and had minimal amount of troops. If you enjoyed watching, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any suggestions on challenge runs you'd like to see me do in the future, leave them in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye!